The aim of this short film is to help people identify certain maples. I'm by no means an expert, but I do appreciate the beauty of what these trees have to offer. So rather than just showing you a quick clip or a photo of a particular variety, I'll try and pronounce the name of the plant and I'll write the spelling of it underneath. Now as you can see, my garden is quite small and the soil is very poor. So all of my maples have been put into containers with good drainage and then they're buried. And there's five good reasons for this. The first one is that it makes the plants easy to move around the garden so they get their best possible position. I can also control the soil conditions for each plant. And three, I can, can also can control the root system of the tree. Four, you don't get huge changes of temperature in the winter and the summer if the, the actual pots are buried, whereas you do if they're above ground. And five, it looks a lot neater and more natural. Anyhow, the first tree is the red dissectum, which is called red garnet. It's very easily obtainable and is a very beautiful tree, which has dark burgundy lace-like leaves all through the summer. It has lovely pendulous branches which give it a great look even in the winter when there's no leaves on it. This particular tree is wider than it is tall. It's, it's about 15 years old but left planted in the ground without trimming it it would grow to about four meters. This next one that we've panned onto is emerald lace. It's another dissectum, but it's green. So it's the green equivalent of the uh, garnet we've just seen. The spring leaves are yellow and green and they go darker during the summer. These turn burgundy in the autumn. It can grow to about two to four meters in height and just as wide when mature after about 10 years. This is this one is probably about 15 year old but it's been kept in container and it's had its roots trimmed every third year. It has a beautiful structure with pendulous branches which give it a dense dome appearance. They also make very good bonsai trees. A lot of these lace dissectium varieties can get misidentified as they are so similar. You've got veridis, sycamore, lemon and lime lace, filigree and uh, many many more that, um, that look very very similar. Uh, emerald lace is very easily obtainable from garden centres uh, so it's very common but it is probably one of the best trees to have. It's a very very beautiful tree and adds um, a lot to the garden I think. It's, uh, is certainly one to one to have. The next little tree we have a look at is it's a sapling really, but it's a, a beautiful tree. It's a Gaigaku Shiadar. Um, these have got what they call Matsumure style leaf, which means they're very deeply divided. It's more than three quarters of the way down to its stem, so it's it's near enough ribbon like really. Uh, the leaves are usually seven lobes, they're quite heavily toothed round the edges. In spring, it's uh, this time of year now, which is the leaves are light green after starting budding in uh, early February actually. It, it holds this colour for most of the summer but it will turn bright red in the autumn. The branches turn down slightly and it gives this a sort of a cascading image of this tree. Very, very nice. Then we move on to Enken, which is a, a linear lobiarium red variety. Uh, this means that its leaves are strap like, similar to a bamboo really. There's usually five lobes to each leaf and they're quite narrow and thin. Uh, they stay this red wine colour throughout the summer 
um, it could, could grow to about three metres tall. It obviously has a, an upright stance. A very lovely uh, red variety. So now we move on to Elaine. Although Elaine does not come under the dwarf category of uh, Japanese maples, it will still only grow to about one metre or three foot tall. But it will probably spread twice this amount, probably about two and a half metres. Sometimes in nurseries, these are just labelled as green dissectum. Now this can cover dozens of different varieties. All, of the, all it tells you really is that it's a green and the leaves are going to be lace-like. So try it and buy all your Japanese maples with its full name. This one can get confused with emerald lace, but Elaine has bigger leaves and turns yellow and gold in the autumn, whereas emerald lace, that turns to a burgundy in the autumn. This uh, next one we're going to go over to is called Emma. It's a red dissectium, so it's similar leaves to the uh, garnet that we saw right at the beginning. Uh, but these leaves remain purple red throughout the uh, summer. Um, if they're in the shade, they do they do turn green actually. This one of mine stays this lovely bronze colour all summer through. Uh, they will change in the autumn to orange and red. It would grow, if it wasn't in a container, to about three metres tall. And uh, it probably would grow wider than that, if, if left, really. This next one is Ozakazuki, which can grow, which is a rather large plant, eight metres or 26 foot tall. It has what they call ammonium-style leaves, which is the best way I can describe that is like uh, five stumpy fingers, really. Um, they are lightly toothed around the edges. It forms a really dense round top tree, which is rich in colour. It's it, but it turns an intense, tenseous red and uh, crimson in the in the autumn. We then go on to the Benny Yubi Gohon. This is the smallest member of the red libro librolliums, which grows just to about two metres tall. The red leaves have five lobes which stay purple or burgundy in the full sun throughout the summer. This next one is uh, called Katsura. It's got quite small leaves and is a, a big favourite with the bonsai uh, people making the bonsais. It can grow up to about 26 foot if left to its own devices. Um, they start off this pale yellow with orange fringes. They turn then sort of yellow green for most of the summer, but turn get back again to a yellow or an orange uh, for the autumn colour. But it's a, a rather nice up, upright tree. This next one is called Cripsy. It's a palmatum green variety. It has small leaves with seven lobes on each leaf. Is a relatively new variety of an upright stance, so it's not that common. I haven't seen any others yet, so I really can't tell you if this is a typical shape or not, or how tall it actually will grow. But it is different, and as it's only in April, I can only just observe it through the winter uh, and through the summer to see... Uh, what it does actually turn out like, but it is is an unusual and nice looking tree. We then pan over to um, the Antropurium. This is a this particular one is called Bloodleaf. These are very rich purple leaves in spring. They've got five to seven lobes to each leaf, um, finely toothed around the edges. It will stay this burgundy colour during all the summer, but it will turn a beautiful scarlet red in the autumn. Uh, the tree, th this particular tree is about 15 years old. 
Uh, it's always been in a container, but if it was planted in the ground, it would probably grow to about 10 metres. It's obviously a, an upright variety, and uh, it was one of the first I brought. Very obtainable from garden centres. So, uh, with a little bit of information, um, you can do a little bit of research on the internet. Now you know what sort of plant you're after, or seen anything that you like, and um, become an enthusiast like myself, basically. So, this is Terry Morgan signing off on his first film. Thanks very much for watching.